everyone. My name is Dana Gelsomino, and this is episode 22 of the Ask a Question show, the show in which you ask a question about any type of like narcissistic or otherwise abusive or toxic relationship or situation. And I, along with the rest of the community here, will do our very best to help answer it. Our goal is to give you the feedback and the support that you need so that you can move forward in getting the clarity, the closure, and the healing that you so deserve. And so today's question comes from Heaven. Heaven is a commenter on another video, and she had asked, Dear Dana, how do I live with a psychopath while I'm waiting to leave? Okay, so fantastic question. And with really any of my answers, my whole goal with the show, with my website, with everything that I'm doing is I want to empower you guys to regain faith, faith in yourself and faith in your judgment and um, in your ability to, to make correct decisions. And so um, the tools that I am going to leave you with and that, that I have been saying over and over and in these videos, maybe I need to kind of make it more clear like that's exactly why I'm doing that is so you can make the best decision you can at the time with the knowledge that you have because you know this person best. So, you know, my two cents is my two cents. I, I don't know them as well as you do. So how I think is the most helpful way for any of us to go about making a solid decision is to use first and foremost logic and reason and then to back that up with appropriate emotion right or i should say appropriately placed emotion and so this is kind of where a lot of people get tangled up is when you're dealing with a manipulative person you're using emotion first and foremost, and then logic and reason are like trailing way behind. And that's intentional. That's why there's so much confusion in these relationships is because manipulative people, in order to effectively manipulate, they can't have you use your logic and reason because if you, did, if you were to use those two things, you would see what was going on and you would leave. So they have to, you know, in poker, they call it keeping you a person on tilt. So it's basically you're getting a person to behave in a way that's not normally how they would behave because you're, you're just hitting them. You're trying to use the emotions against them, basically. So with these kinds of situations, it's really helpful to figure out using your logic and your reason, figuring out is this emotion appropriate? So in your situation, it would be... Um, you know, the decisions that you need to come up with with how do you move forward in living with this person needs to revolve around safety and sanity. And how do you stay safe and sane when you're dealing with a psychotic person? Because that's really what it is. Like the narcissists and sociopaths or psychopaths or antisocials, they're basically like functioning psychotics is what it is because they don't use logic and reason to make their decisions. They just go based off of their whims. And that's why their behavior is so erratic and unpredictable and dangerous because we never know how they're going to, re they never know how they're going to react. It's just kind of whatever they want at the moment. So you really need to do whatever your logic and reason and appropriate emotion tells you what you need to do. So if you're if you're feeling like you are in danger, okay, is that an appropriate emotion? And kind of try to analyze. Like, actually, I actually that is probably the one exception to this. If you're feeling like that you're in danger, don't bother trying to analyze it. Just get the heck out of there because you're gonna, you're picking up some sort of cues on some sort of level that something is off. And and don't try to analyze that one. Just get the heck out with their other behavior. Um, you know, again, using kind of logic and reason, knowing that you're dealing with an illogical and irrational person. So to have any type of like emotional involvement with that is an exercise in crazy making for you. So whatever comes out of their mouth, whatever actions they have aren't sane. Again, they're like a functioning psychotic person. Uh, functional psychosis is really what they have. So don't let it get ruffled. It's like, okay, this person is a psychopath. Of course, they're going to act like a psychopath. Of course, their behavior is going to be illogical and irrational. And I need to, if I'm going to stay here until I can afford to leave or, or what have you, then I need to understand and quit being surprised by illogical and ir irrational behavior because that's what they're about. So I would try to use this time to save up as much money as you can to really get your ducks in a row to develop a safety plan on how you're going to leave, where you're going to go. Um, again, I will link down to how to do a safety plan down below. Um, and then just kind of practice like detaching emotionally and just watching their behavior and not being emotionally invested in it and just kind of seeing 
the how illogical and irrational it is and just kind of getting curious about it and being like that's really wild like I can't believe that this person really thinks that I'm you know going to buy into this or that I believe this or that I'm going to act a certain way because once you're able to detach emotionally and you realize that you're not in a relationship that you're really in a, like a manipulation with a person it almost becomes kind of fascinating where it's just like this is really wild you know and you can just kind of see it for for what it is but of course again as always safety first always so if you even get out of there sooner than later. There's no point in no matter how fascinating their behavior is or no, no matter, you know, how tough it's going to be on you financially, your safety and your sanity do count for everything really. So please make, you know, huge efforts to get out of there. You may even want to call, I would really encourage you to call your local domestic violence shelter, tell them what's going on. Um, see if they have any resources available to you that can help you get out of there sooner. So I hope that helps. Take care. Um, be safe. Please be safe. I will also link down to my support group. It's on my website. Um, I would encourage you or anybody else that's needing some feedback and support or that you'd like to get give feedback and support to others. It's a great place to go. So I hope to see you there. We can, we can chat more about this if you'd like. Um, you guys take care. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, frustrations, ideas, insights, you know, you need some support. You just want to say hi. Don't be a stranger. You know where to find me. And I will talk to you soon. And as always, lots of love to you guys. You are not alone. You are so not crazy. And you really can heal from this. And you can go on to have an amazing life. Um, because after all, you know, the best revenge is a good life. So take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.